Welcome. This is an educational video by Chad Smalley with Center for Sports Medicine and Orthopedics in Chattanooga, Tennessee. This video is intended to demonstrate my preferred technique for an arthroscopic all-inside meniscal repair. Due to the well-documented crucial role of the menisci in load transmission, shock absorption, and secondary stabilization of the knee, my current surgical techniques have focused on preservation and repair whenever possible. The success of meniscal repair surgery is based on several factors including the location, pattern, and length of the tear as well as its chronicity. The most important prognostic criteria for successful healing after meniscal repair is the vascularity of the meniscal fragments. As demonstrated in this healthy meniscus, the inner rim has a poor blood supply and a relatively low healing potential. The blood supply to the meniscus begins at the outer periphery as indicated here. Tears within 3 millimeters of the meniscocapsular junction have an adequate blood supply and an improved healing potential. Unfortunately, tears more than 6 millimeters from the peripheral blood supply are generally considered avascular and are not suitable for repair. The tear demonstrated is in a highly competitive 24-year-old male athlete. This is an acute, complete longitudinal tear at the outer periphery of the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. The tear is 3 centimeters long and within 3 millimeters of the meniscocapsular junction. As you can see, this is an unstable tear pattern with an easily displaceable inner meniscal fragment. When one probes the undersurface of the meniscus, you can see there is a full substance, complete meniscal tear. Debridement of the free edges of the meniscal tear with an arthroscopic meniscal rasp is essential to stimulate a vascular healing response and maximize one's biologic healing potential. As demonstrated here, I prefer to use an all-inside meniscal repair system with a low-profile needle and two preloaded peak backstop anchors. During placement of the peak backstop anchors, great care is taken to only penetrate the meniscocapsular structures. It is essential to avoid overpenetration and possible injury to the neurovascular structures in the posterior and lateral aspects of the knee. There are a variety of suture configurations for all inside meniscal repair. Demonstrated here is a vertical mattress configuration, which I believe provides the strongest repair for a longitudinal peripheral type tear. Next, a probe is used to facilitate tightening of the all inside meniscal repair system. You can see the two limbs of the high tensile braided suture as we cinch them down to the meniscal surface, bringing the two fragments of the meniscal tear into direct apposition with excellent compression. You will notice that this is a knotless system, which I find highly advantageous to avoid wear and tear on the articular surface of the femur above and the tibia below. The tail of the suture is then cut flush to the meniscal surface. Due to the length of this longitudinal tear, a second vertical mattress suture is placed approximately 1.5 cm medial to the first to complete our repair.
Finally, after the repair is complete, we use a probe to test the security of a repair. We place the probe between the two meniscal fragments and again attempt to move the inner fragment into the joint space. The repair is found to be very secure without any instability whatsoever. Due to the location of this tear being within 3 mm of the meniscal capsular junction and the vascular supply to the meniscus, along with a very secure all inside meniscal repair technique, I believe that this repair has an excellent potential for complete healing with the patient returning to full function without any long term sequela. Thank you for taking the time to watch this educational video. If you have additional questions, please feel free to contact me at Center for Sports Medicine and Orthopedics in Chattanooga, Tennessee, or visit our website at www.sportmed.com.